Do you guys remember when Google was just a search box? Yeah, me neither. It's Josh Regar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is my Google I.O. Keynote Rundown. This year at Google I.O., it's not really a focus on products so much as the ecosystems and the experiences that they will provide. But I think there's a really good reason for that. We already have so many great products out in the market, especially ones from Google in the Nexus 5, 6, 9, uh, 7, and all of the different Nexus devices in Google's own camp that perhaps they didn't feel the need to create new products for this year's I.O. Instead, it's all about polish and it's all about creating even better experiences via all of these devices that are even easier for all of you out there. And it starts off with Android M. Now, in Android M, we are going to get a few very key enhancements in there that will probably please a lot of you who didn't really like what was in Lollipop, starting off with permissions. Now, permissions are not going to be available uh, right away when you are installing an application. Instead, permissions, when they are triggered by a particular, uh, let's say, capabilities of an application, they will appear at that time in order for you to know exactly what the app is trying to access when it is trying to access it. And then of course we talk about power and charging, which is probably the big part for me to, 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 to really hear from them. Uh, in the power section, basically we're looking at a new functionality called Doze. Now Doze will use all the different sensors that are inside a device and be able to tell if the device is actually being used by the user. When it's not being used by the user, you're basically going to just see the device powered down to a very low power state and turn off all of the applications in the background to a low power state so that when you pick up the phone it will know that it's gotten picked up and it will have the apps available in the background but while it's in the doze state you're not going to be losing much power apparently on the Nexus 9 you get twice as much battery life from it when using doze frequently then of course USB type C which is something that I'm still a little bit iffy on USB type C definitely will bring even better USB charging maybe some better connectivity but it's going to be a new type of of standard that we're going to have to adhere to in a lot of devices uh, in the coming years or so. So that might be a bit of a change that we still need to get used to. Moving on to Google Now. Uh, Google Now, since we're talking about Android, is what I want to move into because uh, Google Now has always been really great and I've really enjoyed Google Now as a way of just kind of consolidating search. Uh, but it's contextually based systems are what is going to become uh, the key focus of Google Now in the coming year. Uh, basically, we're looking at Now on Tap. Now, based on what is on your actual screen, you're going to uh, perform a search, whether it's with your voice or via holding the home button. And based upon what is on the screen, you will be able to get a very quick search uh, on what it thinks that you're going to want to see. We have some examples up there already. Uh, let's say if you're looking at a particular actor's page and you wanted to take a look at their uh, Wikipedia page, you could press and hold on the home button. It will know that you're looking at a particular actor and then do a search for it on there. Android Wear, on the other hand, uh, is getting some updates to it that really feel like they should have been there in the first place. First of all, a new launcher that will open up when you just tap the screen. And uh, the thing that I think would be really useful for a lot of people out there is the fact that you have the always on option. Let's say you have maps open, and this is probably the big use case scenario that I would use uh, with Android Wear. Uh, you need to get your directions and be able to go everywhere without the screen turning off, and then you have to fiddle with the actual device itself in order to get your directions again. Instead, the screen will actually stay on when you're in the maps application, and then you'll be able to do everything from there without any problems. Project Brillo was another announcement that was made here at Google I.O. Uh, Project Brillo being basically Google's own foray into the Internet of Things. Now, what we have in the Internet of Things are basically all of the different parts of a person's life being connected to a smartphone. Uh, but the problem, as Google saw it, is that there's really no one ecosystem, no one platform for all of these devices and all of these items to really communicate with one another. And that is exactly what Project Brillo is. It's not only a user interface or a back end for all of these particular things, but it's also a way for all of them to communicate. And it consolidates the communication that all of these items will have together in order for really all the manufacturers to be able to connect not only to an Android Android device, uh, but also to other devices in its own camp and it under the same umbrella for the IoT. Google Photos was a little bit confusing because it said it was a brand new product. Uh, that may not necessarily be the case. What we're looking at is a brand new ecosystem of Google Photos. It's essentially like Google is creating their own version of Flickr. And uh, really, it's going to provide a platform for people to upload all of their photos and videos and using the contextual search basis that Google is uh, already using in Google Now and across Android, it will be able to look into the photos and you'll be able to search them for a particular context, not only based upon somebody's face, but also based upon the context 
context of the photo themselves. If you have a bunch of baseball photos, for example, you'll be able to search baseball and it will be able to recognize that you're at a stadium or that you're actually playing baseball with your kids. But one of the biggest parts of Google Photos is the fact that you will be able to upload all of your photos and videos to Google, the Google Photos ecosystem free of charge, unlimited. That's a really big deal. If anybody out there has used Dropbox for uploading photos and videos and then you've run out of space or you just don't want to pay for the Dropbox Pro, well, Google is now pretty much eliminating that problem with Google Photos. Uh, really from there, we moved into VR uh, after a big developer section. And VR, virtual reality, is going to be a big part of Google's uh, uh, presence lead uh, going forward. Not only is VR going to be available in YouTube, but it's going to become a platform by which content creators can actually create experiences for everybody. Uh, there's GoPro arrays and different arrays that will be made available um, via their geometry to a lot of developers uh, who can create their own camera arrays and be able to get 360 uh, panoramic views of an area going in and out, even walking around with the camera to create an experience that someone could actually immersively get into. Now, the reason why I think this is great, uh, VR itself is still something that's kind of on the docket. We're not necessarily too sure how we feel about it uh, other than certain iterations like the HTC Vive, uh, but Google's own way of presenting VR really makes a lot of sense because they're providing it as a way of truly experiencing something through an educational standpoint. The Jump program and then after that the Expeditions program will allow people to take um, these camera arrays and create experiences that they can get, then send to people who might want to learn about places that they otherwise would never be able to get to, or even create experiences in which they might be able to educate kids or educate people in a way that where they are right now, they might not be able to have. VR got a big portion of uh, the last part of this keynote. And while cardboard is still one of the easiest ways of doing so, it is also the one of the most affordable. And that's the reason why going to education uh, is a really good move for cardboard because you can really afford a bunch of cardboard for a bunch of kids and then one tablet to control the entire experience for the teacher. And then of course cardboard, well, that's the thing that we're going to get as we walk out of here. So I just wanted to bring you this little rundown, my little bit of a uh, uh, reaction to being here at the keynote. Obviously we have these screens behind me that you're already seeing and it's just this big spectacle and it was really fun to be here. Um, no, we're not gonna get any really big freebies or anything like that, but I do have still my wristbands for the after hours party tonight uh, and I will be sure to bring you a look at what that is like um, and I will give you an update on cardboard as well. You've probably seen that video being uploaded at the same time as this one. So keep it tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage, including even more from here at Google Google I.O. 2015 here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. Uh, well, make sure you keep it tuned here. Drop us some likes on these videos. Subscribe for even more about Google I.O. And remember that AndroidAuthority.com is your source for all things Android.